We're going to take the Stage 2 Performance Kit from Edge Products and install it in this 2016 Ford Power Stroke with a 6.7 liter motor. Ford Power Stroke is a great motor. You can get a lot of horsepower out of it. Today we're going to see what we can do with a full Stage 2 kit. We're going to do some stock runs as well as a performance testing in Level 3 and see what kind of gains we get. We also are going to run this truck down the track, stock versus the Stage 2 on there, and see what kind of quarter mile times we're going to get with it as well. The Stage 2 kit includes our Jammer exhaust system, which is a 4 inch stainless steel exhaust system with our 4 to 5 inch chrome tip with the Edge Brandon logo on it. Our Jammer cold air intake system that has an oiled filter or a dry filter, you can choose which one you want, and our Evolution CTS2, our in cab monitor and programmer. The Evolution CTS2 is our flagship tuner for Edge products. Basically, it's an in cab monitor as well as a tuner. Um, it will have a 5 inch screen so it can actually show your parameters on the screen and allow you to program the truck through the OBD2 port. And really, the Evolution is kind of the glue that holds everything together. So now you can actually put the intake, exhaust, and tuner together in one package. And like I say, the glue is the performance tuning out of the Evolution. It's going to help everything tune the vehicle and run correctly. Um, the Evolution is pretty simple to install. This is our Evolution monitor. We have our OBD2 cable and our suction cup mount to the windshield. We do offer actually custom mounts as well if you want to look at our website to get a custom mount for your vehicle. So basically it's going to hook into the OBD2 port down here. We're going to run the wire, take off the side panel, mount it on the windshield. So first I want to show you a couple things on the Evolution. With the OBD2 cable, you'll notice there's an HDMI connector on one side. That's what we're going to run through the dash. And then down here we have our EAS connector. So if you want to connect EGT probes, pressure sensors, temperature sensors, the main connector lines in here, runs to the firewall and connects all your sensors through the engine compartment. So if you're running aftermarket turbos or something, you can always watch your EGTs, your pressure sensors that are higher than a stock reading. Um, the good thing about this 2016 Ford Power Stroke is the EGT is actually located in the manifold. So we can read that sensor off the OBD2 port and get the accurate gauge reading. So we don't need to install an EGT probe on this truck specifically, but if you want to, there's still that available. So we're gonna go through here and let this power up. All right, so you'll come to a screen that's gonna ask you to select your OEM. I'm gonna select that. Now it's gonna ask me actually if this is the right one, um, but we need to make sure our key is in the on run position. Not started, not in accessories, but in the on position, so. All right, so I turn the truck in the on position and hit yes. Now it's gonna start reading the protocols of this truck. All right, now it's read the Ford CAN protocols. It's gonna pop up to the gauge display. As you can see right now, there's boost reading, reads off the map sensor in the truck. Your EGT, which we were talking about, that one's reading off the manifold in the truck. You can change it to different ones by touching the screen, go into the PID parameters, and selecting a new PID if you'd like. But as you can see, there's a number of different parameters on the screen there. In order to tune the truck with the Evolution, we're going to go to the bottom menu. You're going to have your full menu options right there to see what you want to do. When we go into tune it, we're going to hit the horsepower logo there, come up to the screen. Now we can pick between economy, towing, and race on this truck. You're looking about the economy level is about 73 horsepower level, the towing is about 43 horsepower level, and the race is about 110. We are going to dyno this truck to give us the exact number, so we're dyno at stock and then dyno with all the Stage 2 kit installed on this truck. So we're going to go right now, just showing you that. That's how we're going to go through the programming here in a minute. But that's as simple as that to get the Evolution hooked up and get it going. We're going to actually hook it up now. We're going to run the cable up to the side panel, mount it on the dash so everything's installed, and we can do a program level on it. But uh, first we're going to run it stock once we get that. We're going to program a level 3 after that, and then we're going to see what kind of gains we get with the Stage 2 kit. All right, so we're gonna install the Evolution. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get this weather seal here, pull it back a little bit, so we can remove this side panel. It's gonna help us access the cord and run up to the top of the dash easier. Got that removed, put it out of the way here for a second. I'm gonna fish this wire up through here. So right here's a good time to you've got your wire pulled out. Plug this into the OPD2 port so you know how much slack you need down there. Down here where your EAS plug will connect, you can zip tie it up in here 
and make sure it's secure, but where you can actually plug it in. So we're just gonna kind of show you, run it through it. It's up in there, nice and tight. And you have your heater vent coming over here. I like to actually wrap this around a little bit, kind of holds it from slipping. Um, and then I can zip tie everything in here later. Um, but once we get it wrapped around how we want it, we're gonna run it up here. We're gonna seal it right underneath there. So it's nice and smooth. Um, and notice I have enough slack so I can actually hook this to the window. So our suction cup mount's gonna be on the window. You gotta have enough slack to get back there behind the device and still have it so where it's not too tight. So you wanna go and connect your suction cup mount, which this is a turn bolt here. You can actually loosen it to angle the device for your viewing pleasure there. And then once you put it on the windshield, you can actually suck it tight. Um, we do have a clean wipe in here to make sure we can clean the windshield off and have a good suction on the device. So for now, I'm just gonna put it on there, kind of put it about where I want to and see how much cable I need. So, so that looks about right for me right there. Where I'm gonna mount it. So you can come in here, zip tie everything up nice and clean. Um, we'll go through all that and uh, get everything cleaned up here real quick and then once we get in here we'll show you how to tune the vehicle. Alright, so we just went ahead, zip tied it in there, make sure everything's nice and tight. We're going to take our panel, put it back in place. Make sure everything sits in there nice and clean. Put our weather seal back in. I like to take it and just rub my hand right down the smooth of it. Now everything's back to there. Basically the Evolution's wires installed up here. We'll mount it on the dash and get everything ready to go to tune it. Simple as that. Key's in the on position so we can actually go through everything, set it up, mount it to where I sit back, where it looks good to me. It's out of the way. Like we did earlier, I showed you, we're gonna go through the Ford menu, make sure the key's in the on position, get to our gauges. Now we're in the spot to where we can start tuning the vehicle again. So we've done the stock run to see what kind of power this truck has. We're gonna go in here and install the jammer intake, install the jammer exhaust, come back to the Evolution and put it in the race three level to see what kind of power gains we get with the stage two kit on the 2016 Power Stroke. First step on the stage two is the intake system we're gonna install. First of all, we gotta get the old intake out. Gonna loosen up the hose clamp, disconnect the mass airflow sensor here. it out of the way and there's three clamps over here on the side and disconnect that so we'll go through here okay so now we got our removed lid now that we got our intake lid off I'm gonna remove this we're gonna loosen up and actually take out our mass airflow sensor but make sure you do that all one time install the new one so you're not damaging the sensor in here and getting dirt or debris on it where you don't want it. It's got the intake out, the top lid off, the filter out, reaching down here and twisting these little brackets that lock it in place. These are pretty stuck on here, so you do have to give a little bit of a tug to get them out. Once you get loose, kind of wiggle it right out there. Make sure your wires are out of place. And now we've got the stock intake box out. No. You got your grommet over here. We're actually gonna remove this from the stock intake and we're gonna actually install it on our aftermarket intake for the jammer. All right, we take our stock grommet back, put it in this jammer intake here. Make sure it's nice and fit, it's not wrapped around there. Okay. Once we have that installed, we'll actually slip this back in there. So that goes in there nice and smooth. You'll have your stock bolt that we'll put back in over here. Make sure that locks it back into place. All right, 
so that's nice and tight. Everything's around that air intake. Nice and good there. Now we'll install the mass airflow sensor and the lid back on here, and we'll be about done. Like we mentioned before, we have our mass flow sensor here. So we're gonna take that off. All right, get the screws out. Now this is where I wanna be careful that I'm not touching anything on here. Preparing it, make sure it's clean. Um, if yours appears dirty, they do have mass airflow sensor cleaner you can put on there, make sure it's dry. Go with the instructions on how to clean that if you need to. We have our mass airflow sensor out. Um, I pre-installed the intake to the intake tube here. Put the hose clamp, tighten it nice and clean. We actually provided rubber grommet here. We're gonna put our mass airflow sensor on to keep a nice good seal. Remember, be careful so you're not touching the ends here. I'm gonna put that back down in there. And we're actually gonna take the supplied screws to bolt that into place here. Got the bolts, screws in here. Twist those in place. Don't overly tighten them. And once you get one in, put the other one in before you tighten it up so they line up nice and easy. And you're gonna pull it right down into that grommet so it's nice and flush. Expect that, make sure everything looks like it's nice and flush on there, looks good. So as you notice, these will actually bolt into the bottom of the intake box. So we wanna make sure they line up. I'm gonna put this back hose back over the intake tube inlet there and use the hose clamp and tighten that back up. All right, make sure that's on there tight in place. Once you got everything in place there, start to tighten that clamp up. These holes should line up so we can put our lid on and sandwich everything in place. Make sure your intake tube here is nice and tight. Make sure it's completely on. Check the bottom with your fingers so you can inspect it. If it's not on tight and it blows off, We'll have some issues there, so we want to make sure it's nice and tight, keeping everything clean. Okay, nice and tight, wiggle around, looks good to me. Now we're going to take our intake lid, put it on top of the intake box here, line everything up, should fit nice and smooth, clamp down tight. We have our four provided screws for the box. The two longer ones are going to be on the inside of the engine component to make sure you reach. The two shorter ones are going to be on the outside of the wheel well area. On this part, make sure you start to tighten them all a little bit and equally get them starting to tighten down so we don't uh, over tighten one side versus the other. Everything's nice and tight. And twist, finish off these there. Make sure all the four are tight. Once they're all tight there, we're gonna come back, plug in our mass airflow sensor does have that red clip, so make sure it plugs in nice and tight and it shuts over. All right, so we've got installed. We've got the uh, mass airflow sensor in there. We removed our filter reminder on our stock one. This is actually gonna go back here in this hole. Grommet will just fit right in there nice and smooth. Make sure it's fully in, everything's good. You can do that with the intake tube out if you want. I like to do it after just so I make sure I have room to do it all. Once I take this, we're gonna put the filter reminder in on this side. Push it in nice and tight. Once it's in there all the way, your filter reminder is in there and we're done with the jammer intake install. All right, so now we're gonna install the jammer exhaust system on this 16 power stroke. So there's two flanges here. Each of them have three bolts in them. So we're gonna relube the nuts on each side flange. On this side, this side, and this piece will be able to pull out 
then we're gonna be able to take them out of the braces here and all the way back. There is a knock sensor on the 15 and 16s up in here. So we're gonna disconnect it from the plug, drop it down, actually get to it here on the floor, take the knock sensor out, install on the new exhaust system, and then put it back up in there. So I've already gone through and put some penetrating oil on these, some WD-40, let them soak for a little bit to loosen up. They can rest up there a little bit. Um, I got my ranch here in case I need to break it. I got a breaker bar, um, as well as I got my impact gun. So we're gonna go through this and start taking all these off and go from there. All right, as we take the nuts off here, we're gonna save them, make sure you put them where you know they are, because we're gonna reuse those with the jammer exhaust system. Um, the DPS on this side, we're gonna hook that up there, put our sill in there and get everything lined back up. So we wanna make sure we have those to put back in place. So I'll keep going through this whole system, but I wanna make sure you guys are aware of that. Gonna have the stock grommets on there as well. Um, the jammer kit does include new ones, so we're actually gonna put new ones on here. So, but make sure you don't destroy these just in case you need them for later or something. We'll just put them aside. All right, looks like the back one came out for me, no problem. So, got that off. Look like Cotter here. Pull it down. You see the stock exhaust is off of there. We're going to take out the knock sensor, install it on the new pipes, and reinstall the exhaust back up there. Here's my knock sensor, the jammer intake. We're going to put it right there. Okay, get that. Now this one here, depending on what truck you have, if it's a long bed, you're not gonna have to cut this off on a 250 or 350. If it's short bed, you're actually gonna cut off 16.25 inches of it. So I've gone through and cut that off already. That's gonna have the flange on there. We're gonna have our piece go here, back onto the DPF side. It's gonna run up over the axle, install everything back up. So I'm gonna get all of our hinges and everything ready to go. We have our hangers. Our exhaust pieces, once we're all done, we'll install the tip, make it all nice, clean finish. So this is where our provided bolts that we took off, we want to put back on. The other side, the, the bolt is actually a press fit, so we don't want to be able to take those off. We want to leave those press fits in there so we can tighten these nuts up on the exhaust. All right, got the hanger hooked up. And this is in place here. make sure that we're gonna be able to clamp both of those down when we start to clamp it. I'm gonna finger tighten this up, just kinda hold it in place. All right, so you can see up here, we don't want it hitting anything up top. So we actually have a piece that we're gonna be able to measure it. So as what would happen actually, we'll just uh, rotate this exhaust system a little bit so we're not hitting it up there. Tight, everything's good. Looking through, final inspection, make sure all my hangers are in. That looks good. My knock sensor's back in, secured back up on the frame. Put those bolts back in. Make sure I put their flange in and cool. And that's our jammer exhaust install.
All right, so now we're in our power level menu. We're gonna hit level three. This is our race tune. We're gonna see what kind of power we get. Is that the level I wanna do? I'm gonna hit yes for continue. It's gonna go through your warning, tell you what's going on there. We're good here. It's gonna start reading the stock files. Now when you're reading the stock file, now when you're reading the stock files, as you can hear in the background, there's a few dings and warnings and stuff that go off. Don't worry about that, that's absolutely normal. It's just going through, checking things, it's gonna set some stuff off. Once everything's programmed, all that stuff will go away and the lights on the dash and go back to normal. So it's gonna set up the stock file, it's gonna read it, make sure it saves the stock file on the device. That's the great thing about the Evolution, it, state, it saves your stock file. So if you wanna come back and return it to stock, your actual stock file goes right back into the truck. Now uh, this, this screen here, it's going to ask us if we want to create a custom tune. Um, if you do larger tire size, things like that, you can uh, program it in here to check on your speedometer. We're going to say no for right now and just go through the level three and go through that process. Okay, everything's on, we're good there. Touch the screen to continue. So now i got to reach up and tell it to turn off. Okay, go there. And tell me turn it back on the on position and not start. Remember that's the on position, not the accessory position. Um, once I got there, touch the screen. So really the evolution is going to walk you through. It's going to tell you exactly what you need to do while you're programming the vehicle. Um, some key th things to remember is uh, don't be messing with the truck. Don't try to start it during this process. Don't unplug it. Let it go through its process so it fully programs the vehicle. Um, once you get that, then you're ready to go down the road. So just be patient for a minute. It takes a few minutes to program it and you're good to go. All right, so we're gonna go and turn the key off. Touch screen to continue. Program complete. So simple as that. So basically here's a bunch of stuff flashing in the background. Like I say, it resets everything. And go back to the home screen. So I'm gonna mount it back up on the windshield, get power level three on it, and see what kind of performance the stage two kits makes on the 2016 Power Stroke. All right guys, we just got done dialing our 16 power stroke with the stage two kit on it. Um, as you can see, it dialed 525 horsepower to the rear wheels with 1169 foot-pounds of torque. That's 115 horsepower gain with the stage two kit on the 16 power stroke. Now the great thing is we have stage two kits for Duramaxes, uh, power strokes, as well as the Cummins motor. So if you wanted a stage two kit for your truck, head over to edgeproducts.com and check out them today.